Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for the First Baptist Church of Tarentum's thought for the day. And certainly, we are always excited to have this moment in time to spend with each and every one of you. And our prayer is, is that the Holy Spirit would continue to be present with us, meeting us, leading us, guiding and directing us, giving us what we need from this word on today and allowing it to become a part of our hearts, our minds, our souls and our spirits as we move forward and move through not only this day, but this um, upcoming uh, Thanksgiving week. Today's scripture text comes from Genesis, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 and 2. And it's a, a relatively simple scripture text. And it reads, now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten up the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, go again, buy us a little more food. Now you'll recall that these verses occur just after Jacob or Israel had sent his sons to Egypt in order to purchase some food because they were experiencing a severe famine in the land. And so they had gone to Egypt, not realizing that the second in command who they were purchasing the food from was actually their brother, Joseph. And so Joseph said to them, I'll give you uh, the provisions you've asked for, but I need you to leave one brother here who was Simeon, and I need you to go and get your other brother who was Benjamin, who had stayed home with his father. And so they went back, they found out that all of the money that they had paid for the provisions was in their bags, and then they were afraid. They had no idea what was going on in their lives. So leading up to today's scripture, uh, Jacob did what would be expected. He said, absolutely not. You, I've already lost one son, that was Joseph, and now I'm looking to lose his full brother, Benjamin. No, I will not allow you to take him. And so here we are with these verses. The, the, the drought, the famine was so severe in the land that Jacob had to send his sons back to Egypt to get provision. And, and, and so we need to, to glean from these scriptures, uh, these verses on this morning, that God will allow things to happen in our lives. Oh my goodness. Sometimes it just seems like it's just such horrible things going on and such hard things for us to face in our lives. But we need to never forget that God will allow things to happen in our life. Now, I want to be careful because certainly since Jesus, uh, and, and so I would more specifically point us to the New Testament scriptures, since Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, God is no longer uh, taking such a, a harsh stance with us as his children. You know, in the Old Testament, he was tough, you know, killing people for touching caskets or, or touching the, the, the box, the altar. I mean, he, he was a little bit tough. Uh, but once Jesus died for our sins, he became the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And so things are a little bit different now. And, and I, I say that because I just want to be careful. Sometimes we begin to think that God is doing certain things to us, that he's punishing us, that he's hurting us. Uh, but I just don't see it that way. Uh, we serve such a loving God um, that he, th thankfully through Jesus, has no reason to punish us. But what he does do is he allows things. Uh, many of the times it's things that we put in place ourselves 
uh, things that we cause to happen because of our own behavior. But then sometimes it isn't. We've done absolutely nothing wrong. And yet and still we end up suffering in one way or another. Uh, so God hasn't caused that suffering. He's allowed that suffering. And just like with Jacob and his children and their family, he allowed this famine to occur. Um, and, and maybe even during that time, he caused the famine. But, but, but just for continuity, let's say that he allowed this famine to occur. And he gave Jacob no alternative but to fall back on Egypt. He had no alternative but to trust God in the situation. And we don't have any alternative either, but to trust God in whatever situation we're going through. Uh, because we have to accept, acknowledge, and understand that God knows what's coming down the road in our lives. He knows where we're going. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen five years from now. He absolutely knows. And so we have to trust that because we can only see the right now. We can't even see really tomorrow, although we make plans, but, but we can't see it. We don't know what's going to happen in our lives on that next day or the day after or the month after or the year after. We just don't know. And, and because we serve an all-knowing God, we have to trust him, you all. We have to trust that he is moving on our behalf and that he's positioning us to be able to receive the many blessings that he has for us. We just have to trust him. So it may not always look like what's happening is to our benefit, and it may not always feel like what's happening is to our benefit, but just know, just know that he's allowing it, and he's allowing it for a reason. And that brings us to our thought for today. Our thought for the day is we have no choice. <laughs> we have no choice. Now, let me just tell you a little bit of my own personal background with this. I heard a colleague, uh, a preaching pastor and colleague preach a sermon 15 years ago, probably. And, and in that sermon, he said, um, many times we say that we trust God as if we're really saying something profound, uh, as if we're really uh, moving in such a great way when we say that we trust God. But he continued, what choice do we have? So when we say we, we trust God, we really aren't saying much at all because what choice do we have? And so here we are today, and, and, and the thought for the day that came out of these verses is, we have no choice. And, and that really is the true answer. We have no choice but to trust God, to trust him for our todays and our tomorrows. So yes, let's continue to use those words that we trust God. And, and yeah, it is truly a great thing to be able to say that we trust him. But never lose sight, ladies and gentlemen, that we have no choice. We have no choice because there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do to, to make life a whole lot different uh, when God is allowing certain things to happen. Now, don't get me wrong, and I'll close with this because sometimes people walk away with just a misunderstanding. I'm not saying that we just sit by and do nothing. I'm not saying that we don't pray. I'm not saying that we don't listen for God's direction. And I'm not saying that we don't do things to make our lives better, that we don't take steps to improve our lives. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we have no choice but to trust God. No matter what's going on, we have to trust 
God, because we have no choice. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this brief word, for this thought, for this message, for today and this upcoming week. A message to help us to better understand that you do allow some things to happen in our lives and, and they don't always look good and they don't always feel good and we don't always agree with them, but certainly your will is going to be done in it all. And we thank you for that. Heavenly Father, our prayer right now, Lord Jesus, is that this word would go with us through the course of this next week, Lord. Cause us to never forget that you know what you're doing and that in the end, we have no choice but to trust you. Oh Lord, cover us and keep us this coming week. Cause us to have a safe and prosperous Thanksgiving holiday. Keep us free from the coronavirus, Lord. Give us wisdom in all that we say, in all that we do in celebration of this Thanksgiving holiday. Again, we trust you, Lord, because we have no choice. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.